Uh, greetings from the Aeroscope National Office. I'm Ramon Aerosmith, Director of the Office and also the Chair of the Aeroscope Steering Committee. I have some kind of overview of Aeroscope for those of you who don't know much about it, and then also some geophysical specific remark dedicated to exploring the structure and evolution of the North American continent. The Aeroscope community conducts multidisciplinary research across Earth sciences using freely available data from instruments that measure motions of the Earth's surface, record seismic waves, and recover rock samples from depths of which uh, earthquakes originate. And in this view, you can see a snapshot from February 2014 of the uh, past and then current uh, observational uh, networks of Earthscope. At Arizona State University, we have the Earthscope National Office, and our mission is to foreground education, public outreach, propel Earthscope science, and be community oriented. Earthscope's 15 year mission is to boldly explore North America. And it's important that we are in our last five years. So Earthscope has a, you know, has observatories, has a science program, has an investigator and educator community. We have a science plan and um, the kind of work that's done is synoptic. We have these community data as facilities, has this hierarchical nesting of focus projects within broad coverage and is integrative and interdisciplinary. So we've been talking a lot about the science achievements of Earthscope, and they're really significant. And uh, just a few highlights here, you know, contributions from Earthscope have included understanding episodic tremor and slip, the relation between mantle flow and lithospheric dynamics, the physical characteristics of a seismically active fault. Those are the kind of first three that come up, but there are many more highlighted in these uh, word slides. And uh, also some uh, kind of unexpected discoveries, for example, applying the plate boundary observatory GPS system for studying soil, water, snow, and vegetation. Uh, we found that the transportable array of the U.S. array has been quite uh, useful as a monitoring capability for apparently induced seismicity. And of course, at the bottom here, we have uh, contributions of increasing public awareness of earth science and the opportunity to public partic publicly participate in the observations and interpretations that are made possible, especially in informal science education, using the concept of place-based education. So this is a shout out to uh, Steve Semkin, who's the uh, one of the co-PIs in our Earthscope National Office and a real leader in place-based education. So here's just a quick example of some of the um, uh, outcomes from Earthscope. So this is, uh, you know, uh, changing uh, ability to characterize the upper mantle uh, kind of before and after the passage of the Earthscope's transportable array with its 70 kilometer station spacing. And then, of course, we also can monitor and study deformation and surface change. And so on the left, we see Earthscope high resolution topography showing the surface rupture of the Denali earthquake. And on the right, this really spectacular strain rate and uh, surface velocity model from Cornet Kramer of mostly plate boundary observatory uh, measured surface displacements. There's also the San Andreas Fault Observatory at depth where we've been able to pull up cores from active fault surfaces in the San Andreas Fault and study you know, basically fault strength and, and the kind of spectrum of fault slip. And Earthscope and geoprisms are transforming our thinking about the tectonic history and active processes in eastern North America. This is an important partnership we have with geoprisms. And you see on the left the complex geologic and tectonic structure of eastern North American uh, region. And then also just to remind ourselves of some of the interesting kind of passive aggressive characteristics of this margin. Uh, recently, Earthscope was highlighted in Physics Today, and uh, Tony Fetter, who was the author, gave this well-rounded uh, overview. We, we have a plan to complete Earthscope, and that is that the uh, National Science Foundation has funded the last five years of operations and maintenance of the U.S. Array and Plate Boundary Observatory by supporting the geodesy advancing geosciences in Earthscope and the seismological facilities for the advancement of geoscience in Earthscope. Uh, in other words, supporting IRIS and UNAVCO to carry on this activity. 
connections uh, of Earthscope are many, and it's important that you know, we very much appreciate the connections we have to geoprisms and the associated uh, amphibious array activity. Earthscope uh, is guided by a steering committee that includes these colleagues. Um, so we, in the last uh, year, have completely updated the Earthscope website, and I encourage everyone to have a look at it. So moving to some of our uh, outreach activities, we are we run interpretive workshops which help connect informal educators with Earthscope science, and provide opportunity for interactions with interpretive professionals. We did a workshop in the fall in 2013 in Acadio National Park in Maine that had some nice participation with geoprisms. And also we're going to do one in May 2014 at SSA meeting, Seismological Society of America meeting in Alaska. We uh, recently published a paper uh, kind of expo explaining some of the experience we've had with uh, social media uh, and, and how we've used it for Earthscope outreach. And this was in EOS. And we've learned some good lessons about having a, kind of some good plans for prioritizing content and also the rate of, uh, sort of posting, and so encourage people who are interested to have a look at that. Now, coming to some updates that may or may not be available from other people uh, addressing the committee, it's exciting to say that as part of the support for Sage Engage moving forward, the um, Clay Boundary Observatory, which has been in Alaska, will continue to be there, and the transportable array will move up to begin its uh, observations there as well. And so there's significant opportunities for education and, and outreach associated with the planning and deployments, uh, interesting opportunities for coordinated lo logistics for geology, and Science Planning Workshop Institute should be planned, and this is a big opportunity for time with GeoPRISM. So here's, uh, maybe you have seen this already, but there's a little bit more detail on sort of approximate sighting uh, in Alaska and Western Canada, so the different colors show uh, different station priorities for the seismometers. The other thing that's quite exciting is in Eastern North America, there's this troll on Eastern U.S. network, and so this is a opportunity to leave or reinstall transportable array sensors in Central and Eastern North America for a longer period. And so this is now operational and is uh, quite exciting. Uh, one thing that's important is sort of looking forward then is some recent workshop reports. And this is the first one. There's a drilling active tectonics and magnetism, uh, volcano, volcanic geoprism fault zone post safe odd. This was a workshop last year. And it had a goal of helping to define a US-based program of continental scientific drilling with an international scope. And so it did talk about returning to SAFOD for investigation of earthquake triggering, but also there were many other ideas for um, exciting opportunities to use these uh, tools to study the subsurface. Uh, I think an important connection between Earthscope and geoprisms is through the Cascadia Initiative, which um, is, has a goal to obtain high quality data across the shoreline in Cascadia. And this includes support from NSF EAR that was initially linked to GeoPRISM's Earthscope margin science. One question as we go forward when we think about what's going to happen with the amphibious array is what is the nature of that support in other regions? So, for example, the question is if the transportable array is diminished in the Aleutian, in the Aleutians, perhaps the synergy is lessened. And so these conversations are happening with the amphibious array steering committee and uh, there are members of the Earthscope Steering Committee that are on the ask, including Jeff Reinor and Brandon Schmant. And so uh, I think it's important to have these conversations and keep uh, guiding this big uh, activity and capability. So another thing that is interesting is what is EarthCube and sort of opportunities for cyber infrastructure to propel our science forward and not just the Earthscope, but all uh, geoscience. And I think, you know, in Earthscope, we've been struggling a little bit to find out where to sort of hitch uh, our activities to EarthCube. 
and so this could be an important conversation with geophysics. Um, we did do, uh, uh, we have a preliminary plan for cyber infrastructure, which basically talks about the, the idea that the facility may have this kind of vertical integration of uh, basically different data products, but then the real goal is this horizontal integration where we can go across the data streams to uh, integrate multiple data sets to answer uh, the various science targets that we have. Uh, we had a end user domain workshop for our scope in October 2012 that helped us think about this um, and, and we're still doing that. Uh, recently we had a, a meeting that was partially supported by EarthCube and that was to sort of explore connections between EarthScope and computational infrastructure for geodynamics. And we had a couple of goals. One was to explore geodynamic modeling of lithospheric dynamic data integration and software tools, and then to enhance the use of EarthScope related observations of lithospheric structure and deformation. So this is many of the questions and, and tools that we discussed are completely relevant for geophysics. We also had a, a meeting uh, right before the Geological Society of America meeting in, in October 2013 that was uh, oriented towards the four-dimensional evolution of conterminous U.S. and it was preceding a party symposium on this subject. We just have completed the final report and it's available on the web. The, the idea of the Earthscope National Office has always been that it would rotate through the U.S. possibly following or leading um, the moving parts of the uh, observatories and that it would have these sort of four-year uh, awards. And so our award is, and is just at the end of its third year. And so there's uh, some effort to begin the process of uh, finding out where and who will uh, have the next EarthScope National Office. And so uh, NSF colleagues are working on a request for proposals that will come out in the next few months. The start would be in a year or so. And emphasis, I think the community pushes really that it should have an emphasis on synthesis. So what have we learned from EarthScope and, and how can we take those achievements and move forward? And on that point, this is uh, thinking about EarthScope and the idea that after 2018, we will need to recompete this uh, resource at high levels, you know, it's an important opportunity to kind of ask the question of what do we want our science to be in 2020, and EarthScope and geoprisms have a strong connection. David Simpson at the EarthScope National Meeting kind of had some inspiring commentary about the you know, obvious need to demonstrate success and impact, and we've been working a lot on kind of accumulating the discoveries of, of EarthScope and articulating them we want to sort of celebrate the differences and especially how geoscience uh, communities work well together in this open uh, kind of approach and then build on our strengths and remind ourselves of relevance. And so everywhere in here where it says Earthscope, you could add and geoprisms or substitute geoprisms. So this is a nice uh, general kind of inspiration. So moving forward, there are some important ideas that are out there, and you may be discussing these. But one is uh, kind of thinking about subduction zone observatories and hemispheric-wide view of plate boundaries going all the way from the Aleutians to, to Tierra del Fuego and kind of bringing together the existing networks and perhaps then supplementing or filling in any gaps. And so it's a really exciting kind of multidisciplinary opportunity that's out there and is gaining momentum. There are other thoughts about the next big thing, and people have been uh, exploring those, and it's a really exciting uh, kind of creative activity of thinking what we all could do in 2020, let's say, to um, kind of pursue next exciting topics for all of our science. So thanks for listening, and uh, uh, if you have any questions, please shoot me an email.